Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome into another episode of Harmonious. I'm super excited to be here. We're talking to Jordan, who's across the world from me, which is fantastic. And we're having way too much fun before we started recording. So before we go any further, Jordan, welcome to the show. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Can't wait. So if you are a subscriber of this show, you've watched before, first of all, thank you. I love you. But second of all, you know that I love to have fun. The name of Jordan's company is Spicy Pineapple Marketing. I was just over the moon excited when I saw that before I even met her. So we're going to dive in. We're talking marketing. We're talking LinkedIn. We're going all over the place. Uh, but Jordan, this is I'm I'm super excited for this because specifically we're talking about LinkedIn, which is where you know I do a lot of business. Our our clients do a lot of business there. People watching this show live on LinkedIn, but none of us know what we're doing. That's the, that's the moral of the story. So first of all, what do you do as far as a LinkedIn strategy? Is it LinkedIn strategies? Is it cold reach outs? Tell me a little bit about that. So it's a bit of a mix. So the clients I help are from a range of industries, from med tech, merchandise, hospitality, family lawyers, IT, we've got a chef. It's a random mix. And these guys all want to reach out to people that you can't just go and knock on a door and go, hey, I want to speak to the CEO of that company. So this is how I help them get in with LinkedIn because everyone on LinkedIn puts their title, their location, the company size. So it's super easy to find them. So this is what I help with. So first I go through a strategy session to go, cool, who do you want to target? Who do we need to reach to get you into that business? After this is all sorted, we sort out messaging. The first message is always the same, that connection one, because honestly, no one really reads it. They just look at the mutual connections and that's about it. They go, cool, do you know someone I know? Fine, I'll accept you. <laughs> this is usually the case. I think my first message is something like, my parents said you can never have too many friends. I'd love to connect. You know what, though? That's creative in and of itself, because usually it's like, hey, I'd like to connect. I hope you accept or something like, again, nobody reads it, which is fine. But I always do notice the ones that are are creative. Actually, you might like this um, one that I got that I will always remember forever. It's the best ever. This dude said something like, hey, LinkedIn is kind of like the Tinder for business. So I hope you'll swipe right on me. And I was like, that's amazing. That's the best message I've ever received. How could you say no to that? I mean, I guess oh. it like creeped out by it, but outside of that. <laughs> yeah, but then it also cancels out the people that you probably don't want to do business with anyway. True. It's an instant filter of if you're gonna if you're gonna mesh as human beings. I love that. So, but what I heard you say in the beginning, you said a random mix of industries and clients. Uh, what I heard is this works no matter the industry or niche you're in, which is very appealing. Because I've also heard the flip side of that, where it's like, I only work with realtors. This might work with other people, but I, this is my specialty. So I, I really like that you have this wide range of industries that you work in. And that's, to me, that's really cool. I, know, I like it. But then some people are like, oh, you need to niche down. I'm like, no. I've actually tried. But other people just seem to come at me. They're like, I need help with LinkedIn. I'm like, I'm not going to turn them down. Mm. You <laughs> I know want what? to help. Absolutely. And that's the worst advice that I tend to hear in marketing. And I want to get your feedback on it too. People say niche further and the riches are in the niches. And to me, it's a complete lie. For us, what we teach to our clients is you niche to the need and then you change the messaging. So the need is that people need help reaching out on LinkedIn. The messaging, you, the way you talk to those different people, whether it's a chef or a family law office, is obviously going to be different. But the service is still the same. Am I, are we onto something there? Yeah. The same with social media, right? It's all doing the same sort of strategies. It's just changing your content and the way that 
you know, you're interacting with people is different than LinkedIn. But yeah, yeah, same with social media. You can do it for everyone. <laughs> I love it. Awesome. But okay, so the the first message, unless you're going to send a message about being uh, the Tinder for business, it really doesn't matter. But I like yours, <laughs> which is awesome. So then I think the confusion starts then, right? Like, how soon do we contact people? What do we say? All of these other questions and the fear really starts to come up. So how do you approach that that next phase? And what is the next phase for you? Yeah, so after they actually accept your connection request, then I would leave it a couple of days. Um, let them check out your profile. They'll understand what you do, hopefully in you know three seconds. Make sure your banner is up to date. Make sure your face is there up to date. Your title, explain what you do so that in two seconds, they know. They don't need to ask you, oh, what do you do? Like you've just got a blank page. <laughs> no. And then after that, I ask people a question. So it's never a pitch, never a pitch, my God. <laughs> you'll scare everyone off in a second i mean everyone gets those messages i work in it i do seo do you, you need help your website could i'm like thank you that's nice would you like to ask anything about me while you yeah right <laughs> uh where's the unconnect button <laughs> i have done that a few times i'm like i can't deal with this yeah i mean i usually leave it like i just don't respond and then they send the same message like three more times you're like okay now i have to I have to unconnect with you. Yeah. It's not even like I want to respond and just say no. It's just, I just, no. Yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah. So my, yeah. my questions are always, you know, are you the right person to talk to about this? Do you use videos for marketing? You know, a very easy question that they can say yes, no, not the right person. That is generally the three responses I go for on LinkedIn. And it's also super quick for them to respond because no one likes to respond with an essay. No one has time. Mm. So we're making it short, simple, and it's a start to a conversation. They already know mm. what you do. You don't need to tell them. They're going to look at your profile. So ask them a question which relates to what you do, but it's an open-ended question. Yeah, that's fair. Well, open-ended with the possibility of a quick response. I think, yeah, I like that. Um, I, what I'm not hearing you say, and maybe maybe you just didn't say it, was that you're using automation tools for this. Are, are you? I do, yeah. Okay. For the start, so the first connection message is the same. Yep. The second question is the same. Mm -hmm. That I ask across the board. Because if, say, I am working for a video production company and I'm targeting marketing in companies, I can ask them all the same question for them to answer, but the conversation will go in different ways from there. So that's where it's not automated. It's right. gonna be me on the back end, having those conversations after that. But to make it quicker, first two are the same, waiting for mm -hmm. them to connect and that first message. So, okay. why, compli why complicate it? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, that's definitely something that would be a concern because small business owners, entrepreneurs, we don't have enough time in the day as is, right? And then to go add on six hours of, of farming people on LinkedIn is crazy. But um, okay, so then as far as the tools to automate things, do you have a favorite or maybe a, a list of favorites that you've used in the past? Because that's, I think another scary thing is picking the right tools. I'd love to hear what you're using for that. So I actually created my own. Oh, you got to just be all fancy on us now. This is ridiculous. <laughs> well, tell me more about that. That's really interesting. So that I can help my, if, you know, if they don't want me to do it for them, I can go, cool, I've got a tool that can help you. You don't need me. I will do a training session and pass it on to you. If you have any questions, I'm here to answer. So with that, there's kind of a list of what you do. You're just linking things in a tree. Let's say, so, you know, if you're not connected, you do this. If you are connected, you do this row. And it also engages with the profile. So it goes and follows the profile. It goes and views the profile. It endorses their skills. It likes the posts so that you don't need to manually go and do this every day. The system behind you is doing that and engaging, which is absolutely amazing. Because who has time to go, yeah, view profile, view profile. Right. And I'm connecting with a hundred people a week for my clients. Like, so it's, it's a lot. And even when they have connected, 
this automation still continues. If someone doesn't respond to your message and you endorse their skill, it's like 100% prompts you back to that conversation to say thank you. Mm, interesting. And then, then you remember, shit, I didn't respond to them. So now I kind of need to. <laughs> it makes them feel bad, right? <laughs> mm, yeah. And all of those notifications from LinkedIn you get when someone views your profile, follows your profile, notifications from LinkedIn, notifications on your email, it's different touch points. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So brand awareness and sales, it's great. Yeah, I think that's that's something that I've definitely noticed between the people who just send those like cold pitches right away and they keep sending them versus the ones who take a more patient and I hate to say calculated because it, it has a, a bad connotation to it, but a more calculated approach is like I see their face and their name every day in my notifications for like three weeks. And I'm like, who are these people? It almost prompts me to reach out and just be like, thanks for engaging on my posts. Like almost like do their job for them and beat the automation to it. Cause I'm sure it's automated. Um, but how much, how much easier is the process that you find going that route than, than just going right to DMS? It's more interesting. If you just keep messaging someone, they're going to ignore you. Right. So having that awareness and then also posting content quite, I would say twice a week on your own LinkedIn gets their attention. They're like, oh, that's really cool. But don't post about your business. It's more about you. Let people know about you, what you do, how you've helped your clients. That's going to get the best responses. If you're just, oh, this is what I do here. Go to my website, do this. No one's going to actually respond to that on LinkedIn. It's more personal. I put a post up, I think, geez, a couple of months ago about I've traveled to 32 countries. And from that, people just responded. I've listed the countries and they're like, oh, I've been there. What did you think? It's not even about business. It's like, oh, I can talk to you about something. It it's just being personal. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I, I was going to ask you that too. So obviously it's important to have a profile that's active and now you're not just like DMing people and and interacting with them. As far as the content to post, how much is a mix of professionally what you do, whether it's results for your clients, or what you're doing in your business, um, and then the mix of the personal life too? I've always struggled with that, especially on LinkedIn, because it is such a air quotes professional platform. I'm like, do people want to hear that I had like a steak for lunch? I don't know. That's weird. So like how how much of that is like or what's what's a good balance between the two? I want to say if you're posting twice, three times a week, you know, your polls can even be random as well. I think I asked someone once like in the morning, like, do you drink coffee or tea? Like what's your drink of choice? It's just about getting that engagement. It's not even about business by this point. So it's complete mix. I'd say one business, one personal. If you have pets, <laughs> gold mine. <laughs> <laughs> Post a picture of your pets. I love it. Literally, it, it will get the most attention, which is really strange. You think, okay, that's like Facebook. But then it's transitioning to LinkedIn and you kind of put a background of your business while talking about your pets. It's a weird one, but it works. And for you, you could post pictures of your giant eight foot spiders. And I'm sure that would get engagement too. Yeah. When I go and look for them, <laughs> I'll find some on my camping trip this weekend. I'll send them to you. Don't <laughs> send them to me. We were talking before we started recording. Uh, I mentioned Jordan's from Australia, from the Sydney area. And I was like, I, I've heard so many bad things about the wildlife there. And then she said she went camping. And I'm like, no, just no. So please don't send me those pictures. I have a thing about spiders like little spiders, please don't send me eight foot spiders. I'm not, I'm just going to unfollow you. I'm going to unconnect with you. Like I said, <laughs> Oh man. Ow. <laughs> okay. So, um, aside from the big spiders, I, I like this and that's very helpful. I am doing LinkedIn totally wrong. I can tell already because I don't post anything about my personal life. I just assume people don't care, but it's good to hear that people do care and they want to see that you're more human. Um, so then what are some other things you do with your clients to use LinkedIn as a sales tool. We're, we're reaching out, we're engaging with profiles, we're asking questions, we're not cold pitching. What else are we doing? So it's pretty much building on that conversation. Usually you're still not really pitching in the next couple of messages. 
And then it's all about getting that conversation offline. So you want to have a video call with them. You want to get a phone call. You want to email them some more information. It's getting them onto a different channel after that. So that's what I do. Either my client be like, great, I'm in video production and I want to send them an email with all of my pricing and what I've done before. Great. I'll get that email. And then it goes back to them to be able to close it after that because that business owner knows more about their business than I ever will. In that strategy session, I try and go through as much as I can, write it down so I can be them. So I find out enough, but I'm still not them. Then right. I pass it back so that they can answer those questions. And if something comes up like, oh, I had one once when someone said, I know your brother. <laughs> and I was like, hey, <laughs> someone thinks they know your brother. I'm going to leave this one to you. Yeah, right. <laughs> there are times to back out. <laughs> and that's, that's pretty much it. They don't need to do anything else, which is awesome for them. They can continue with their procedures and their actual working on the business than going out and getting these leads, which takes a lot of time. Yeah, this is something that's come up for uh, for us a lot recently. It's and I've noticed it with our our clients. There's there's three phases of business, if you will, and I'm I'm oversimplifying this, of course, but it's the the startup, which is basically under 100k in revenue. It's the 100k to a million, and then the million to 10 million. Obviously, there are bigger businesses than that. I know, um, but the the first phase that that startup to 100k, that's like all lead generation that should be your only focus is to get revenue in the door don't worry about how pretty your product is or what your systems are systems is really phase two and leadership is phase three but for those bottom two phases the first two it's lead gen and there's a bajillion gurus on the internet that say they have the strategy for lead gen or for sales or whatever and it's all got that silver bullet magic fairy dust on it and i'm just tired of hearing it quite honestly um, so for, for people like me who are, my target audience is on LinkedIn, as you've said, your, yours is your, your clients are, wh what is, what is the difference between this strategy, what you're talking about and all of this other guru crap that I kind of just mentioned, I I'm just curious for you to demystify it for me. So I'm going to say that with most clients, I take a more honest approach. I go, this isn't going to earn you millions in a month. <laughs> okay, we're but already them, starting off better than all the other ones. <laughs> I'm, I'm realistic. I kind of say, okay, I'm going to try my best to get you a shit ton of leads. I say that I want to get you at least, you know, three to five a month at the lower end. But then I've had companies that have got 70 in three months. So the scale is very wide. Well, I'm like, I don't want to overpromise, and I'm not going to tell you that every conversation you have, you're going to close a client. Mm -hmm. Be realistic. Right, right. And of course, that's so, on them too, right? Like their their sales skills and relational skills. So you're you're in marketing, Spicy Pineapple Marketing. Again, love the name. Absolutely love the name. There's a component of this that has to be your, creating your offer, right? Like what, what do you work on with your clients as far as the messaging, the offer, the reach out, the, like the LinkedIn reach out is a big thing, but there's so much else that's involved with this. How much of that is on you versus how much should the client come prepared with to work with you? So they honestly don't need to do much for my process, but they will, you know, they, they're running a business. They should know how to potentially close a client. So well, that would be the would think, right? I mean, maybe. <laughs> I know it's a tough one. They're like, I know how to do it. So I'm like, fantastic. You've got awesome skills. You know, let's get some people in. <laughs> but you're right. It does. It's not a natural thing for everyone to be able to follow up so many times to close a client. So that's what they would probably need to work on more. I get the leads in the door. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's fair. Um, but I like that, you know, because that's like I said, that's the struggle for for most businesses is the consistent lead flow, especially that smaller size. Honestly, we don't start working with people until they're in that middle and upper range and then beyond. So, but I think that that portion of the market is, is underserved because they're misled into thinking there are silver bullets. And then they invest the resources they do have into just terrible tactics. 
What are, what are the different size companies that you work with? I would say the, the sort of the small to medium size because that's okay. the ones I do actually want to help. Yeah, They're the ones that do struggle. Like your bigger companies, they have the money to throw at random things, you know, all those big billboards and ads. You're like, yeah, cool. Okay, you don't need, you don't need help. You're okay. Let, let's help the ones that actually need it to get out there and grow. So that's the, the ones I normally work with. It's a... Yeah, from two people to maybe about 50. It's, yeah, mine. That's awesome. That's our sweet spot too, five to 50. I love those people. They're my favorite companies. They Aren't they just the best, those small business owners? You can make such an impact and then they can impact their teams and their communities. I, I just love it. Um, so if you are one of those people, you want to work out and reach with Jordan, the, the only downside is she she does speak Australian. So if there's maybe a language barrier, you can see that I did just fine. The English to Australian conversion was okay. Um, but <laughs> outside of that, uh, she's obviously a phenomenal resource for this. I'm going to put your website on the screen. Um, tell me a little bit about how you get started working with people and where they can find you. So website's easy. Reach out to me on LinkedIn as well. There is links on my profile for my Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. But I mostly work on LinkedIn. Imagine that. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> yeah, check out my profile and hopefully you'll figure out what I do in three seconds. If you don't, please tell me and I can make it even more obvious. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good tip. Uh, that's awesome. Well, I thank you for coming. I really appreciate this. And, and for those of you watching, like I said, if you're not already subscribed, please go do that. We would love to hear how you think, what you think about this show and this ridiculous show in general. Give me feedback. What else do you want to hear more of? You want more LinkedIn tips? You want more Jordan? You want more spicy pineapples? I want more spicy pineapples. This is the coolest thing ever. Um, but Jordan, thank you for coming. This has been fantastic. All the links will be in the show notes. Um, and please come back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. We'll see you next time.